Hey guys, let's get more news from Dallas Cowboys, but first don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Dallas Cowboys' poor run defense on the road might cost them a trip to the Super Bowl. The Dallas Cowboys have trampled every team that has stepped foot in AT&T Stadium. The problem is, the same thing has happened to them on the road. And if recent history holds true, Sunday's game at Miami is unfortunately shaping up to be another roadkill game for the Dallas Cowboys, underscoring a problem that could destroy their Super Bowl chances. In Week 15, the Buffalo Bills did more than just expose the Dallas Cowboys' struggles to win on the road, where they are 3-4. They also showed where the Cowboys are most vulnerable, against the run. Buffalo Bills running back James Cook had a career day against the Cowboys, with 179 yards on 25 carries and two touchdowns, one of them on a pass. Overall, the Bills, who have the NFL's fourth-best run offense, gashed the Cowboys for 266 yards and three rushing touchdowns in their 31-10 victory. The Dallas Cowboys, 10-4, have the sixth-ranked defense, but they rank only 16th against the run. In at least three of their four road losses, to Buffalo, the Arizona Cardinals, and the San Francisco 49ers, the Cowboys surrendered rushing yardage totals of 266, 222, and 170, respectively. Their poor performance on the road led star linebacker Micah Parsons to rip the team's effort, saying it's unacceptable and there's no excuse for it. The Bills bludgeoned the Cowboys on the ground more than any other team this season. But it could get even worse for the Cowboys over the next two weeks. The Dallas Cowboys have back-to-back -back games against two of the top four rushing offenses, beginning with Sunday's game against the Miami Dolphins at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. The Dolphins, ranked fourth, 139.6, boast one of the NFL's most potent rushing duos in Raheem Mostert and Devon Chain. Mostert, who's third in the league with 968 yards, leads the NFL with 18 rushing touchdowns, which just broke Ricky Williams' 21-year-old franchise record of 16. Meanwhile, a chain has had a breakout rookie season and, when healthy, is a home run threat every time he touches the ball. In only eight games, a chain has 613 yards and averages an astounding 8.5 yards per carry. That 1-2 punch could be deadly to the Dallas Cowboys who surrender 148.3 rushing yards per game on the road compared to 86.6 yards per game at home, where they are 7-0. After the Moster to chain tandem, the Cowboys face one equally as challenging in David Montgomery, 855 yards, and Jomer Gibbs, 792 yards, of the Detroit Lions, who rank second in run offense. The saving grace for the Cowboys is that they'll play the Lions at home, where the most rushing yards they've allowed in a game is 111 against the New York Giants. After that, the Cowboys finish on road against the Washington Commanders, a team that lacks a strong run game. But considering the Cowboys' road struggles, the Commanders' run game could have its best day. With the number two seed in the NFC, the Dallas Cowboys can't afford to fall any lower, which might necessitate them going on the road for a playoff game. In true Jekyll and Hyde fashion, the Dallas Cowboys have a point differential of plus 171 at home and minus 4 on the road. It all starts with the ground game, which is likely to ground the Cowboys' season to a halt in the playoffs anywhere outside of Dallas. Cowboys' Jerry Jones drops Mike McCarthy endorsement after loss. The Dallas Cowboys suffered maybe their most disappointing loss of the season when the Buffalo Bills blew them out 31-10. Though their early season losses to the Arizona Cardinals and San Francisco 49ers were discouraging, this loss was particularly disheartening since the Cowboys had become so dominant. After beating the Philadelphia Eagles the week prior to extend their winning streak to five games, the Cowboys were trying to prove they were in the class of the NFL's best teams. However, the loss brought the Cowboys back to the earth. This late in the season and right before the playoffs, it's hard to see Dallas as a next-level team when they were outmatched in every phase of the game. Still, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones had nothing but praise for head coach Mike McCarthy and his coaching staff after the loss. During an appearance on 105.3, The Fan, Jones revealed what he told his team following the Bills game. Well, he's coached three playoff teams in a row, Jones said. 
I think he's done an outstanding job. I think the fact that he's your offensive coordinator as well as your head coach puts him as high or a higher stead than when he was the walk-around coach. All of those things are positive. I frankly said to the staff yesterday, you got us in this spot to be as disappointed as we are about the Buffalo deal and our loss there. It's your fault because y'all have done such a great job this year getting our team to where we, our fans, everybody have the expectations that we have. You pushed us up here to where we get out here and play great the next three weeks and we could absolutely have something great happen for us. Now you all caused us to be disappointed here on Monday by not living to that standard up there, but hats off to you, via NBC Sports. In other words, I didn't spend my day in there looking grumpy, or however you might look, even though we were all disappointed, Jones said. The best part of our team this year has been the coaching staff. While the annual expectations for the Cowboys are always Super Bowl or bust, McCarthy has still been successful during this tenure with the Cowboys. Dallas just clinched their third straight playoff playoff berth, while both Dak and the offense have improved this year. Cowboys fans won't be satisfied until they win another Lombardi, but the team is overall on the right trajectory with McCarthy at the helm. Free agent D. Carlos Dunlap waiting out market, ready to help contender in 2023. As the NFL calendar enters its sleepy summertime period ahead of the start of training camp, Dunlap remains without a team. Much like he did at this time a year ago before signing with the Chiefs, and after recently receiving his Super Bowl 57 ring alongside his former Kansas City teammates, he's waiting to see whether a return tour is in his future. I can help another team get one of their own or help the Chiefs again, Dunlap told Forbes. The Chiefs haven't ruled that out, but currently it's a waiting game. Up until 2022, the story of Dunlap's career largely centered on frustration. He knew he'd performed well enough to be part of a championship-winning defense, but also encountered the many disappointments shared by the 2010s Bengals teams that frequently faltered in the initial round of the postseason. Dunlap's exasperation contributed to Cincinnati's decision to trade him to Seattle in 2020, but he joined that franchise too late to experience the ride Seahawks fans enjoyed in the same decade. Kansas City provided Dunlap with a different opportunity. He wouldn't have to hope the team would live up to its potential, nor would he be a veteran added out of a desperate attempt to remain competitive. He could find his fit with the Chiefs and produce. Dunlap's role evolved throughout the 2022 season as the Chiefs turned toward a situational rotation, capitalizing on the presence of the veteran Dunlap and rookie George Karloftis. Dunlap only started in two games, the same total of starts posted in 2021 in Seattle, but still played 537 snaps, recording 39 tackles, four sacks, eight passes defensed and one forced fumble. He also helped the Chiefs take down his old team, the Bengals, in the AFC Championship game. The Chiefs obviously have a special spot for me because they were the first team to help me win a playoff game and to win a Super Bowl, Dunlap said so that would be a great opportunity. There are two sides to the Dunlap coin at this stage of his career. He's willing to take a lesser role in exchange for a place on a team with serious hopes of winning. He's also coming off a season in which he posted a career-low total in sacks and averaged his lowest QB pressure rate in the last seven seasons, per next-gen stats. The end of the road may arrive soon. I'm a free agent, and I feel great, and I still love the game, he said. I'm a realist. Still, Dunlap doesn't necessarily sound as if he's ready to walk away. That could change if he remains unemployed through the 2023 season. But if 2022 was any indication, there's still a chance he signs somewhere and when the time comes, he'll plan on returning to Cincinnati for his official retirement. The Dallas Cowboys are interested in hiring Carlos Dunlap. And you fan, what do you think of the Carlos Dunlap situation? Leave your opinion in the comments.